Testing, testing. Okay. Hmm. Craig Drag, hello, hello. Well, let's see, Stallion. Um, I had trouble. I had trouble with the stream. I had Neko in it and I couldn't get rid of it. So the only hope was to shut it down and open a new one. So that's what I've done. We now have, a, and he, there's always something peculiar and bizarre that happens when I do these streams. I, I don't know why that is. Now, I have, um, I've returned, this is StreamYard. I have been on Streamlab for a few months, but I had help with it. Um, and without help, I really am not capable of doing it particularly not capable of bringing people up and uh, sharing their story with them. So let's see. There was someone who I don't recognize, Stefan. Hello, Stefan. I want to get um, Andrew Fennis. Stallion, fish keeping, guarding, gardening, uh, came up on the old stream and it was just hopeless. So I shut it down. So I think he wants to show us something. I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Let me kind of get into this first and uh, figure out where we're at and what we're doing. Uh, I, I have to kind of get in gear right now. I'm in neutral. So <laughs> give me a, give me a minute. Let's see. Let me go back up to the top here and figure out what we got, what's going on. Sultan is here, Ilguto, Prey Drag, Stallion, Andrew, Daisy Saber, Tanked Up, West Virginia Holla Girl, Marky 306, Larry Henry, Mock 389, Stefan, Howard Van Tassel, Steve Warren 3G, Tin Smalls, Tin Smalls. You should have had a wrench by now. We'll try it again. Uh, Daniel Groth, hello, Daniel. Missou Diamond, Ketsy Nelson. Oh dear. <laughs> Ketsy says, one of my nearites named Spike is riding on my mystery snail named Herbert around the tank like it's his own personal taxi. Well, what could I say? I wonder if he's paying a fee. <laughs> I, I rather doubt it. Funny stuff, these critters, aren't they? Uh, Andrew Fenna talking about uh, KG Tropicana. Video on water changes. I guess we're going to have to talk about this. I got a call from Super Cichlids in Dover. Uh, they heard about it. And they're good friends with John. So uh, they um, 
they're going to try to talk to him and try to help him understand what's going on here. He apparently did not watch the video because if he had, he would have had an informed opinion. And his opinion was based on, I think, doing nothing more than 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 reading the um the thumbnail text <laughs> which really didn't tell the story so hopefully we'll get that together i think they're going to try to set up a conversation with john they like him a lot he's apparently a nice guy uh and we'll see if we can talk so we'll see where we go with that Let's see, Kaylor is here. I'm good, Kaylor. How are you? Nice to hear from you. Liam Cotton. Hello from the UK. Nice to see you, Liam. And here's Johnny Carty from Scotland. In the UK, we've got uh, we've got a number of people in Scotland. We have some folks. Uh, in Discord, who are uh, in Scotland. One of our staff is located in Scotland. Ilyuta. Apparently not by name, Ilyuta. Uh, just talking about, um, I don't know, I haven't watched it. I shouldn't repeat ah, rumors. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, apparently, he uh, is taking issue with the notion that that laziness, um, he believes laziness should not be um, a motivation for maintaining tropical fish. And, and I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I think also, however, working smarter and not harder is equally as important. Uh, I think, I think one of the I don't know what to call it. One of the myths of fish keeping is, is particularly true with saltwater, is that you have to absolutely exhaust yourself in the process of maintaining the tank. And I've discovered after. Quite a quite a quite a lot of years, twenty years or more, of dealing with hundreds of fish tanks, saltwater and freshwater, that generally speaking, once they're set up to be stable, the less you do, the better. There's a story in today's news about Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe, over the last some years, I think 10 years or so, has become relatively foul. Um, the, the water lacked any clarity. There was considerable algae growing in it. It was just really going downhill. And, and so the government decided to put some money into trying to fix this. Well, about the time they were getting approval for the multi-million dollar project, the shrimp that had been put in the lake some 15 years ago suddenly crashed and were wiped out. And what returned then were Moena Daphnia and fairy, excuse me, fairy shrimp. About two years ago, they began returning. The shrimp had wiped them out. And as they returned, the water clarified. The water is now clear to 80 feet. That's pretty clear. Clear to 80 feet is about as clear as water gets. It was the Daphnia and the water shrimp that cleared the water and that were keeping the water clear before the shrimp came in and wiped them out. Now, that is to say, 
nature has a way of dealing with these kinds of issues. Pollution is a perfect example. Pollution is not a permanent condition. Pollution requires a, a continuous and persistent application of excess nutrients. That means far more than the biological system is able to handle in order for pollution to continue to exist. Once the polluting element, whatever it is that's causing that, is stopped, then the system clarifies. It assimilates all of the nutrients, it balances, and it brings itself back into a whole healthy state. Now, I demonstrated this in some videos where a tank that was foul to the point where the fish couldn't survive and they had to be pulled out. Over a period of about a week, clarified and balanced, the fish were able to go back into it and no water change was done at all. Here's the problem with doing water change. You're taking the water out. The water is not the problem. What is in the water is the problem. So taking the water out, yeah, it'll get what's in the water out as well. But you're throwing the baby out with a bat. You need to deal with the problem in the water and not the water itself. Rarely, if ever, is the water the problem. Now, there are times when things get so bad that the, the simplest thing to do is just dump the water and put new water in. That certainly happens. It happens not so much with biological activity as it does with suspended material, dust, particulate matter. If you take, for example some great hands full of dirt and throw them into a tank. It will make that water cloudy for months. And the oh, you can filter it, but you're going to have to filter every bit of that dirt out in order to be able to clarify it. So the notion that Father Fish is teaching people to throw dirt in their tank is ridiculous and obviously not true. I mean, look at my tanks. Are they cloudy? I'll tell you what's wrong with them. They get too many plants in them. You can't see into it. This week, I'm going to pull out all of the Sagittarius. That's the big plants. These guys are like five feet long. They're just, they're covering. And, and if you see them, look, at the leaves are running all through it. I've got some tubs outside now, and the weather is broken. So these are going to go out in tubs, and we're going to grow them out. And this fall, we will do a fabulous harvest and start selling them because they're a magnificent plant. Um, but they're crowding me out here. And I've got a lot of new plants I really want to try. So anyway. Letting nature take its course is not lazy. It is, in point of fact, the only way to ensure that your tank is going to be stable. Because nature will stabilize. It will stabilize the system. Nothing you can do is going to make it stable. And pulling all the water out every day isn't making it stable. In point of fact, it's doing the precise opposite. It is maintaining a persistent state of instability because the, the, the material, the processes that are in that water are not given an opportunity to fully develop, to, to fully balance, to be in harmony 
with everything else in the tank, the fish and plants included. So uh, the other complaint about Father Fish is that he is a master aquarist whose 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 uh, techniques are so sophisticated and so complex and require such detailed uh, analysis and effort that the average, the new or even average fish keeper, well, it's just beyond them. <laughs> and of course, those of us who are doing this are well aware of the fact that that's pretty stupid. These tanks, what we're doing, I have had five-year-old children create these tanks in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes and then leave them alone, put plants in them, put some fish in them, get a little bit of water motion going, and leave them alone. Even to the point of putting a food web in, which is something we only recently in the last year or two started doing. But the food web is really the key to any of these small systems, any of the nano systems, any of the systems that have small fish, because the tank, the system that you're creating is perfectly capable of creating nutrients for every single living organism in the tank. That's what the cycle of life is. That's what the web is. And that happens if you, in your tank if you give it an opportunity. An opportunity is a couple of things. It is the right kind of, of nutrient additives, which are pretty tough. I want to tell you, they're leaves from trees. Dry, dead old leaves preferably some from a pond so you can bring some of the animals in that are chewing them up and then just put leaves in. That's it, leaves. And that creates a whole chain of food that feeds every living organism, all the hungry mouths in that tank. Now, you may poo-poo that, but when you do that, you're poo-pooing nature. And I suggest you put your pride aside and make an effort. Try this. Just try it. Try it. You might just be amazed. Now, when I say try it, I don't mean screw it up deliberately. Because there are those who do that in order to prove it doesn't work. Don't do that. Do yourself a favor. Put one inch of dirt, two inches of sand, put some plants in about an inch down, put a little sponge filter in it, turn a light on, leave the light on for a week, 24-7. Then you can begin cutting it back. If you will do that, which I got a video coming out Tuesday. We just did one at Super Cichlids in Dover, Delaware. It's a 40-gallon beautiful tank, 40-gallon tank, dirted deep substrate. It now has a pair of spawning crebenses that are living in it, hatching out their eggs as we speak. When did we create this tank? Yesterday. And there's a spawning pair of crebenses in there right now. Now we're adding a food web to it so that those babies will be able to find natural food in that tank. I'm going back up Wednesday to add more food web to it. This is not, not complicated. It is the opposite of complicated. It is divine simplicity. Why is that? Because it it depends on, depends entirely, is founded upon the astounding, unfathomable 
complexity of nature. And by simply creating an opportunity for nature to establish itself in your tank, you are able to watch occur the majesty of a hundred million years of evolution. And that's absolutely true. And there is no reason not to do it. No reason at all. All right, Mark Raymond's here. Hey, Mark, nice to see you. 3J, what if somebody's having a problem? Must be on my end. I don't know what that is. I probably can't be heard. That would figure. No audio. Are you serious? Are you serious? Apparently not. <laughs> Okay, we do have audio, right? Has an earthy smell, but not bad. Yeah, it does smell a little earthy. It smells like smells like nature. Audio is fine. Thank God for that. Uh, all right. Where are we? It leaves the mind from time to time. Now, we have um, a research project. It's been going on since the first of the year. It's about a six-month project, five months, I think. It's wrapping up right now on leaves. Five months of scientific research into everything that is known and published about leaves in fish tanks. And believe it or not, there's quite a lot. We have excuse me, a team of researchers who have been doing this. The research is now done, and they're putting it together. Why am I hiccuping? So within a month or so, that PDF will be available for a small fee, <coughs> and it's going to explain the nutrient level of all the different kinds of leaves, the sorts of leaves to use in your tank, how to use them, where to collect them from, and on and on and on. Everything you ever knew or thought you wanted to know or knew you didn't know about leaves, we're going to publish. Now, that'll be followed up immediately by a similar research project on substrate. And that's going to be a winner because substrate is something that the gardening, the uh, agricultural segment of our society has been studying in depth most recently and has discovered some very important and very valuable lessons, among which are what we're doing. I mean, we're we're following that research as well. So for the next, the rest of the year, we're going to be involved in research. The third step will be all of the organics, uh, the micro and macro organisms, the plants, uh, the bugs, the, 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 the choppers, all of the invertebrates and so forth. So that'll be the third phase. So we're, we're, these will be available as PDFs. Eventually, we'll be able to publish them as books, but and initially, we'll be able to get them out so everybody will be able to benefit. What if you have shrimp and you get planaria? Wonder what it says. What if you have shrimp and you get planaria at a standard? Um, if you will put some small fish in that tank, they will eat the planaria. Bettas are good. They may eat some baby shrimp, but it will control the planaria. And point of fact, it'll get rid of them. Now, most planaria are, are, are vegetarians. 
they eat waste. They, they don't attack animals like shrimp. There are one or two species that do, but there are literally hundreds of species of planaria. Most of them are totally harmless. If you have the one that have a di has a diamond head, a diamond-shaped head, that may well be a, a, a troublemaker. You can remove them, but the best thing to do is put a bed of or other um, small fish in there, and they'll eat them up. They'll be gone. Uh, Ketsy is talking about almond leaves. Almond leaves are good. They're 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 like oak leaves, though. They're very very slow to deteriorate, and they have very little nutrients. Um, I mean, they're certainly better than nothing. Uh, they're comparable to oak leaves, but what you what you want is a variety of species of leaves because some have more nutrients than others and some break down more quickly than others. So you want a stable, long-term uh, nutrient base. Uh, does anyone keep picture cat picture cats and do they call you shrimp? Pictus, pictus, not picture. Pictus cats, do they call shrimp? Pictus cats. They probably eat shrimp. Catfish are not not uh, quarries, but catfish, the big the big mouth guys. Uh, they they pretty well are omnivores. They'll eat anything they can uh, happen upon. Does the natural aquarium have an odor? No, not at all. Kevin is saying, my brother stopped by and said, why wow, your water is so clear? Tons of tannins, dirted style, proud moment. The, the, the thing about clear water, it's like the Tahoe is now clear because its native population has been reestablished in it. And that's clarifying the water. And, and the precipitants precipitate down into the substrate. So they're no longer even accessible to the water column. All of the tiny little specks of dust precipitate they fall they they may fall slowly but they fall they fall down they go down into the sand down and, and continue to fall down down into there and as a result the the substrate is acting as the ultimate filter gravel won't do that gravel washes out sand won't wash out Can we add leaves to an established tank? Absolutely. Absolutely. Pick this. P-I-T-C-U-S. <laughs> Poo-pooey. Right. Pick this. Someone told me goldfish will eat or disturb plants. Uh, it depends on the goldfish and depends on the plants. There are plenty of plants the goldfish will not bother. You need to find the right ones. We've got some lists over on Discord. Come on over there and check it out. Mark Raymond, experiments have started with substrate. You need to uh, join us over on Discord, Mark, and, and participate if you haven't already. I'm not up to date on everybody who's involved in that process. It, there are a number of people in the project, and they, they kind of come and go. Uh, what was my very first aquarium like? Ha, huh. nice. Planetary dweeb. It was, I don't know what size, well, probably a two or three gallon. Might have been five, but I don't think so. I bought it at a local pet shop, and there was a creek across the street. And I collected minnows and crayfish. I don't remember what else. Whatever else was there. And put it in that tank. That was my very first fish tank. It was sat on my bureau. Didn't have a light. 
didn't have a filter, sat on the bureau in my bedroom. All summer long, I was at my grandmother's, my father's mother, father's mother and father. And they let me keep that. And it was wonderful. It was That was my very first thing. I think I was eight years old when I did that. Thank you, Kevin. 1982, greetings from Belgium. Let's see if I can give, uh, give you a wrench. I'm passing out wrenches. YouTube is slow to, uh, slow to assign them. I don't know what problem is. Be do. What do you do for flow, Caleb Taylor? Um, the tank that we just set up at um, Super Super Cichlids has a canister in it. Um, it's a top flow. Look at this, Stephen Clark. Thank you so much. My plants are springing to life at the sound of your voice. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for your $20 gift. That means a great deal to us. We, we've we taken on uh, paid staff now to be able to make these videos and to work on the research project. They're not making a lot, mind you. I mean, it's little more than a pittance. Uh, covers their gas bill, I guess, for a week or so every month. Uh, but it's happening. Uh, we've got enough money coming in now to be able to support some people who have been volunteers forever, and it's it's uh, it's helping them and and helping us, helping everybody. So uh, that's pretty exciting stuff. So what do I do for flow? By and large, sponge filters. I like sponge filters. They're convenient. They're easy. Uh, they don't break down. They get full of dirt, but they can keep doing that forever. Uh, they're easy to clean. They last forever. And the air pumps are pretty good, too. Air pumps will last a long time. Let's see. I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff back here. Alex. Just found your channel today. Well, welcome, Alex. Nice to have you here. Where am I based? I am in Salisbury, Maryland, which is about half an hour west of Ocean City, Maryland, about 45 minutes northwest of Assateague Island. Now, I'm going to be going to Assateague in the next week or two doing some collecting, we're going to set up a saltwater tank. So that's going to be pretty exciting. I've been waiting for the weather to break so we can get out there and start doing some collecting. Uh, I think we're going to find some cool stuff. I hope so. Yes, I'm in Maryland. Absolutely. Oh... Where are we? Yeah, Ketsy, there there are no leaves that are common in in uh, in in northern climes that are toxic. The the one thing you do not want to do is put green leaves in a tank. You want leaves that have fallen from the tree, not leaves that are picked off the tree. That's no good either. You don't want to pick leaves and dry them because it will contain all of the, the chemicals that are in that leaf naturally. The leaves that fall off the trees are drained of nutrients before the tree lets go of them. So by the time they fall, there really is excuse me, not a lot in there. So it takes a lot to make a difference.
I don't know what's repeating. I ate a steak earlier in it. I don't know. Probably too much seasoning on it. How much time you can leave oak leaf in a small tank until it is completely broken down. The whole purpose of these leaves is to, is to leave them in there until they are broken down. So it's critical to have animals in the tank that can break them down. And where do they come from? They come out of your local pond, local ditch, local stream, local creek. Gather up a handful of leaves and put them in your tank. If you're afraid to do that, put them in a jar first. That's what our resurrection jar is all about, to show you there's really nothing to be afraid of. Then you can put them in the tank, and they will establish a culture in that tank. That's what we call the food web. It's one small part of it, but it's a critical component because it brings in also all of the bacteria and the fungus and the, the archaea that are needed in order to be able to establish a fully developed food web in which everything is feeding everything else. That's, that is to say, everything is feeding on something else. It's the big fish eating the little fish eating the little fish, but it goes way beyond that. It goes down to the leaves. It goes down to, to the bacteria. It goes, it goes to everything that's living in that tank is food for something. And, 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 and that something that everything is food for is part of the food that everything is food for. If you catch my drift, it's a massive consuming <laughs> edible. It's a multi-edible. Everything eats everything. And that's the cycle of life, you see. That's what you're establishing. Now, it, it's in some cases very slow. In other cases, a little quicker. The plants, for example, are part of that process. And you can't do it without plants. Cannot be done. Plants are a critical component of the food web. They're a critical component of life. We can't have biological life. We can't have animals without plants. They, they won't exist. They will cease to exist. If all the plants died, all the animals would die. Just like that. I mean, they are, they are interdependent to a point where they exist as, as one cycle. Say so you need plants in your tank. 1982 Seba. Yep. I gave you a wrench, but they're not, they're not working real hard here. Let's see. Let's, let's get down some. Plants die off, poorly leaving the tank. If they're dying and you take them out, then you're removing nutrients from the tank that were created in the tank, by the tank, for the tank. So no, you don't take them out. You leave them in there so that they can become nutrition for the other critters that are in that, that web, that food web. So don't take dead leaves out, for God's sake. Leave them in there so that they can provide nutrient for the system. The minute you start pulling things out, then you create a, 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 an impoverished system. You create a system that is not capable of feeding all of the animals. Now, the recent video we did talked about what happens when that achieves uh, uh, a... Uh, saturation and basically what happens is it creates a, a breakdown of some things at the top that are consumed and if that if that uh, injection of uh, the consistent injection of nutrients stops, 
then it will assimilate everything in the tank and reestablish the balance. So here's the thing. I don't throw leaves into this every day. I put leaves in these tanks maybe once a month. Now, they're pretty well established. But in a month, what's in there is being used up And it's requiring additional material. In 20 years, this tank has not yet quite reached the point of saturation. Although, frankly, I think it's close. That's part of the reason I want to pull the big plants out so I can get a better sense of what's going on in here. So we're going to be we're going to be checking it out pretty carefully. This tank is 22 almost 23 years old and it's never been broken down in that period of time. It's had a total water change three times. That was each time we moved it and once when it crashed some kid dumped a can of food in it and we drained it down about halfway. So anyway, we're going to do that, and we're going to evaluate then where the tank is and what needs to happen next. Part of the problem is it's got five inches of substrate. I really can't put more substrate in it. I really need to reduce it to get more viewing space in the tank. So that'll be part of what I'm going to be looking at is what's going to be involved in the possibility of removing some of that substrate and then capping it with sand. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But it'll be an interesting process. <clears throat> Lumby says, experience is like gold. Everything Father Fish talks about is exactly what the old pros used to tell me with this hobby. Yeah, these are not my ideas. I've spent my entire life sitting at the feet of the masters. People who themselves spent 40 and 50 years and more learning how to maintain these fish. I didn't learn everything they had to teach. I learned what I needed to learn, to do what I needed to do. There was so much more I'm sure I could have learned. I think of Jeff Campbell. Jeff Campbell was a teacher I met at the Putney School in Putney, Vermont. His classroom had about 25 tanks, big tanks, mostly big tanks, some little tanks, a wide range of fish, a lot of African cichlids. This was back in the late 1960s, 60 years ago. The one fish I remember that just absolutely astounded me was the Uwaru. He was breeding Uwaru. He had Uwaru fry babies that he was growing out and lots of other fish as well. I learned enormously from him. Now, he maintained under gravel filters, but he allowed them to remain as filters in the tank until they became completely blocked, plugged, solid, and then the, then the plants would take off, and the plants would just cover the tanks. So he wound up using under gravel as a way of creating a deep substrate that had all of the nutrients in it that the plants needed in order to be able to survive and thrive. I think of Henry Hall, Merle Cohen. I mean, so many others. Men who, and it was all men. I, I never met a woman fish keeper. There aren't many, you know. They're precious and few, and they are precious. 
and they tend to know things that men don't know. They tend to have a better sense of husbandry. Funny word, isn't it? Should be motherly <laughs> than, uh, than, than men are. Men tend to be more technical. Women tend to be more, I don't know what to call it, environmental maybe. More, more consumed with the biology of the system. So those are the lessons that that we as men need to learn. Corey Skett, every one of the tuba takes in gravel. That's the truth. Yeah, sand too. They, they don't, not much escapes them. Yeah, gender really doesn't matter. The only thing I've noticed is where there is a couple maintaining a fish room, it will be remarkable because there will be a division of labor with the guy doing all of the mechanical stuff and, and the, the wife, the woman, doing all of the, the husbandry stuff, the caring for the animals and plants. Uh, and those systems are, they just thrive. They're magnificent. I've seen that three or four times with salt water and fresh water. And it really is astounding. Just remarkable. Shrimp and aquatics. Let's give you a wrench. Slazers in here. What slazers? New beta tank. Five gallons. Free Anubius. Some views. Narrow sword. Javas. Taiwan moss. Wow. Renicky. Oh, my word. We need pictures of that. Slaughters, you need to get over to Discord and, and 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 post some pictures. That's exciting stuff. Officially, it was six years old in 1960, running around in my little round tip sneakers. Yep. I wonder what our let me see if I can find this now. Wonder what are just donated. Five dollars if I can find it. Where is it? At the bottom? Yeah, it is. There we are. Thank you, Wonder Water. Very much. Very generous and very kind. Your donations do help. They they absolutely do. Help me to make payroll so we can keep this thing going. Uh, anyway, I mentioned a little earlier, I've got a video coming out Tuesday um, that will be a new tank that we just set up at Super Cichlids in Dover, Delaware. Uh, if you're near there, get down and check it out. We set it up yesterday. It's a deep substrate system, a 40-gallon beautiful tank. Um it we I found a pair of spawning crebenses in a cave in one of their tanks, moved the cave <laughs> with a pair in it into the tank. They sent me some videos today that'll be part of the video Tuesday. They have moved in and are, are doing housekeeping. So it, what'll be exciting is we've got a food web going in there, so it's gonna be able to feed those babies as they hatch. And they'll be hatching probably by Wednesday, uh, if not. Well, they'll hatch earlier, but they they will start swimming by Wednesday or 30th, Thursday at the, at the latest. Ugh. Yeah, I, well, slaughters, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I got to admit, that's impressive. Spellbreaker. It was in Home Depot here in Jersey. Take the wood and the cut in there. Building my aquarium furniture. I won 25 for myself. Oh, that's exciting. We do have a couple of carpenters uh, on Discord who will be thrilled and delighted to hear about your project. Come on over and talk with them. You may get some tips and 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 clues and secrets 
these are both uh, um, pretty skilled carpenters. They work as professional carpenters. So that's that's pretty nice. Uh, let's say Jose Chao Rodriguez. Chao. Chao. I have a 30 gallon heavily planted, 20 plus pence of different variety, 25 fish, big as is four inches, most less than one. Snail shrimp, all doing good. Hope it keeps up. Well, should do fine. Uh, I'm assuming it's a deep substrate, or you wouldn't be bragging on it, would you? Nice, Jose. Bright Flounder. Thank you, Bright Flounder. Appreciate you. Appreciate your comment. Let's see. Getting dojos for a semi. That's such a neat fish. Dojos are so cool. Uh, they're busy little bees, and they're really not uh, aggressive at all. There are other kinds of loaches too. The skunk. Skunk bug tea is another one that's just really very cool. I saw a pair in somebody's video, yes. Oh, no, I didn't. I saw them at Super Cichlids. I need to pick them up and bring them home. They're, they're another very neat little fish. Blaze Max. Blaze and Max. Nice to see you, Blaze and Max. Serious tetra like tank, Stephen Clark. Indeed it is, and do you know, I don't have a single Tetra in there. I've got Formosa. I've got Pencil Fish. I have Cory Cats, some Bettas, a lot of Snails. Don't have any shrimp in it yet. I need to get shrimp. I think what I'll do is get hold of uh, Bio Aquatics and have him send me Send me some stuff. I'm about ready to do that. Uh, Patrick Marshall. Hello, hello. Nice to see you, Patrick. Used to bring Taiwan bee shrimp. They are difficult. Now I know where you're coming from. Now, <laughs> that's how you're able to do those uh, soft water plants. That'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. And we need to get you some more Taiwan bees. They're, uh, the, the Caradina are, are just really spectacular shrimp. Uh, but they, they require a different kind of environment. And and uh, I I trust we can pick your brain, slossers, and learn how to do these soft water systems. That would be that would be a wonderful resource. <clears throat> That's a Blazemax talking about the prettiest carpeting plant. Know which one he's talking about? I don't know. <clears throat> I let's see. He says, "Oh, this is Jose." Yes, it is. But I found you after the fact, and the substrate is eco-complete, about four to five inches. Once it reaches about, well, three to six months. It will establish as a soil substrate. <clears throat> Just the, the the continuous penetration, precipitation of nutrients getting down in there will will enrich that uh, that eco complete. The problem with eco complete, it's not a bad product. It's just that if you use it on the surface, it it washes out all the nutrients almost in, within a matter of months. And, and so it just becomes gravel. 
Um, but if you will bury it, put it under two inches of sand cap, <clears throat> then as it traps nutrients, it'll form a really rich environment and it'll be a very healthy one. So you're not in any trouble at all. You're really in good shape. Uh, pictures. Discord. Let's see if I can. Somebody maybe post the Discord. I can do it, I guess. Let me get it. Post the Discord. Link. Okay, here's a permanent link. It will be good forever. So you can use that to um, uh, to sign on to Discord. Make sure you fill out everything. If you don't put your email address down, you're not going to be able to get ranked, which means you won't be able to post. You really won't be able to say things. It, it, it will uh, make it impossible for you to be able to to share. Uh, and keep in mind, this is a, a family-friendly atmosphere. We do have one channel that's called Soapbox. It's an adults-only channel. You can't go there and beat up on anybody. We don't allow people to abuse each other. But you can go there and talk politics and religion all day long, and it'll be appreciated. But that's uh, we have a channel specifically for that because I need it for me. That's why it's there. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Kenneth, nice to see you, Kenneth. Nice to have you here. What is Bright Flounder unable to accept father? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Bright Flounder. Somewhere else. I saw him earlier, I thought. Dan Haystead. Best snails for a fish tank. You know, there are a lot of them that are really good. Nearites are wonderful. Um, mystery snails. Ram's horn snails. No, not the big ones. The little ones. Even pond snails. Bladder snails. Um if you will do mystery snails and nearites, if you want to go fancy, get some rabbit snails. They're kind of cool. Uh, that'll take care of it. Shrimp and aquatics retracted a message. All right. Officially, Axelrod's handbook. Say she should not allow a large amount of tooth effects to remain in the tank because the danger of fell in the water. Especially true with tube effects. Now, it, having said that, um, tube effects are almost impossible to get anymore. What you get now is blackworms. Uh, and blackworms will colonize. They're a lot easier to colonize. They're not nearly as delicate. They're not dependent on foul conditions the way tube effects are. So they're actually a little a little easier, healthier, if you will, to keep. But don't load it up because they 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 have a tendency to die on moths. They'll just create a die off. And that can foul everything. So you want to put small amounts, like a little glob, a little a little ball of them in the tank. And then a few days later, you can do it again. Small amounts, and you can actually establish a, uh, a, a colony by doing it that way. Uh. Black worms and scuds. Very cool. Blackworms and scuds are really the key to the macro, uh, the macro fauna of the system. They're 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 the guys who feed the small fish, 
and break down the leaves uh, and digest plant matter. So, you know, they're, if you can find them, you've got gold. And they will survive. If you have a pretty good, over time, you should have a layer of, of leaf material built up over much of the tank, such that if you have fish like Epistogrammus, they'll get down in there and spawn and raise their babies and that. Other fish will too. I was talking about Crebensis. They will. Rams will. So many fish will be able to use that as a nursery for their, uh, for their offspring. It's a wonderful way to be able to maintain a genuinely balanced environment. Yeah, cherry shrimp are great little cleaners. Um, Omre wants to use iron fertilizer. Do not. Just don't do it. Do not put ferts, liquid ferts, in your tank. The, the amount of liquid fertilizer that the plants need is easily accommodated by whatever fish you have in that tank. Any more you put in there, it's going to create false growth and it'll create a, an, a, a, an unholy, unhealthy pressure on the entire system that will eventually result in it crashing. And you'll wind up having to do water changes in order to get it out. Don't do it. You don't need it. It's not necessary. You can push a nail down in the sand. Really? Really? That'll provide iron to the plants. There are a lot of ways to do that that don't involve putting any kind of liquid fertilizer in. Banana peel and potato peel. Absolutely, Lumpy. Absolutely. Banana peel and potato peel, any kind of vegetable. Uh, you don't need to launch it. Just toss it in there. The microfauna will love it. And there are fish that like chewing on it too. Certainly Placostomus catfish, all of those kinds of, of critters just love them. So yeah, that's a great food. Uh, yeah, Kevin, Poop Patrol. Poop Patrol. <laughs> if you're on Poop Patrol, you're not feeding your fish and they're pooping, that means they're eating, doesn't it? And if they're eating and pooping, they're fine. That's all you need to know. If they're eating and they're pooping, you don't need to do anything else. CO2. The dirted substrate creates carbon, di carbon dioxide in extreme quantities. Vast amounts of CO2. That's what the bubbles are, you see, coming up out of the substrate. Uh, in the first few months, much more than any kind of mechanical device would be able to create. And it doesn't affect the pH of the water. And it delivers the CO2 where it's needed, which is at the roots of the plants. So you don't need to even think about CO2. It is taken care of by nature itself. Oh, Fishley, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. Best teacher on YouTube in the hobby. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Very kind. Red floaters and salvinia, nice plants. Red floaters are so pretty. Hard to keep in a tank because they're a highlight plant. You've got to have the right kind of light for them, but they do great outdoors, like in a pond or a bucket or whatever. In my local swamp, says Lumbee, I find a lot of empty shells, but not wild ones. Yeah, they're, if, if the shells are like clam shells, they're buried. You need to dig down in there a little bit. 
and the snails may well be too if you're finding empty snail shelves. Uh, they also may, may well be out deeper where there's perhaps more nutrients. Root around, you'll find them. You just need to, you need to keep looking until you figure out where they are, but they obviously are in there. Try to catch some virgin neurons. Ah. <laughs> Funny guy, Lumby. Funny guy. People don't like the little tiny white dots that nerites leave everywhere. Those are eggs. And they will only hatch in very, very hard alkaline water. And by that, I mean brackish water. So I kind of like them personally. I mean, they don't bother me. But there are some neat nicks who get distraught about the little tiny white dots. I guess they remind them of ick. I don't know. <laughs> Tank is polluted with cherry shrimp. Lisa, love to have them. I'm dying to get some shrimp. <clears throat> can you use pine cones? Absolutely. You can use pine cones. You know the little seed pods with the stickers on them? Can't remember what they are. They're perfect. They are a home for Daphne. Daphne loved to get in there and colonize. Uh, any of that stuff is wonderful. It's perfect. But again, it must be dry on the ground or <clears throat> or in uh, in a body of water, in a creek or a pond. Don't pick stuff off a tree and try it <coughs> Ooh, and stick it in your tank. It won't work. It'll kill stuff. Not good to do. <coughs> Can't get red roots real red. Not enough light. Put them outside. <coughs> Uh, provided joker, shall I still use root tabs? If you don't have an adequate substrate, yes, you can use root tabs. You want to put one tab near a plant, a big plant, like an Amazon sword, once a year. Not more than that. You don't need it. Because if, if, you, if you don't do it regularly, then it will fully assimilate and become part of the web. If you do it routinely, then it, it becomes a force unto itself. It injects itself into the system and prevents the plant from doing what it normally needs to do in order to create the nutrients at once. Let me talk about this a little bit because it's important to understand. <clears throat> Plants release hormones and other organic substances in the dirt that cause bacteria to create certain specific nutrients that the plant needs at that stage in its development. The stages are stem, root, leaf, flower, stem and pestle seed. At each of those stages, the plant needs a different nutrient. It signals the bacteria to create the nutrient in order to be able to have what it needs. Now, if you're putting fertilizer in there, it short circuits that whole process, really cuts it off. So you don't want to do fertilizer at all if you can prevent it. Now, if you got a brand new tank, <clears throat> four inches of sand, no nutrients in it at all, you may need to do that. But do it just one time. Do it the first time and never do it again. You don't need to do it after that first time because that, that will begin the process of generating 
the soil, the material in that sand that's needed in order for the plants to be able to thrive. <clears throat> Kevin Brislong, 71, been doing aquariums since around 66. Made a huge amount of mistakes. And now I don't, and now I don't, because the less I mess with the aquarium, the tanks keep themselves in shape most of the time. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Nature does a better job than you could even possibly do. And, and believing that changing your water all the time is somehow maintaining a healthy tank is nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Oh, you can keep them going until something fails, and then you're going to lose them all. That is not a stable environment. That is the very definition of an unstable environment. And if you're depending on your fish keeping to create and maintain instability, <laughs> call me when they all die, and I'll help you get going in the right direction. <clears throat> Stephen Clark, 20 bucks. My pencil fish are really shy. Is that normal? It most certainly is. Most certainly is. Pencil fish are a very, very shy animal. I've got half a dozen of them in here. It's part of the reason I'm waiting at the big plants out so I can see them. Because I know they're in there. I just can't find them half the time. I can see about 10% into the... I mean, it's gotten ridiculous. <laughs> So we'll we'll do that. I, I think I'm gonna I, I set some tubs up today. I gotta get them dirted. Um and then I gotta get the, these plants out and, and out there and get them growing because they're a plant that's not you can't find them anymore. There was only one man who was raising them and he's gone. Uh and this is what's left. So if I and I did pass some out. To some other folks, but I want to get a lot more people going with them because it absolutely is a magnificent plant. <clears throat> Josh just set up my first father fish aquarium 10 minutes ago. All right. Gathered everything from a nearby pond, rocks, plants, twigs, mud, some soil from the backyard. The filter is now cleared up and it will, it will. It'll clear up. I will share on Discord. Bravo, Josh. Looking forward to it. That'll be exciting. <clears throat> Tap water or stream water is better. Officially tests everything. If you got well water, it's perfect. Tap water with chlorine is perfect. If you will spray the water as it sprays, the, the, the chlorine will dissipate. It's a gas. It goes out of the water very quickly. Spraying the water into the tank or into a holding container will cause the chlorine to just be gone. If you have chloramines, that's a whole other can of worms. And you really have to use sodium thiosulfate to get rid of it. You can use calcium. Like, cal what's it called? The you can use calcium. Is that what I'm thinking about? I don't know. Sodium thiosulfate. Ah. Carbonate hardness. Yeah, officially talking about that's really key. That's right. <clears throat> Carbonate hardness is a function of um, <clears throat> bone meal, for example. Bone meal is a real a good source of, <clears throat> of carbonates. Uh, chalk is a source of carbonates. Any kind of shell material. <clears throat> Thank you, Donovan, very much. Can I use sand to gravel from a local lake here in Minnesota? Just use as is. Does it need treating? Would you still use dirt under it? Yes. Um, yeah, you certainly can. If it is very 
if it's got a lot of essentially soil material in it, then then that's all you need. You may in fact need to cap it with something cleaner. But yeah, sand, <clears throat> sand gravel mix, a sand gravel combination uh, from uh, from Minnesota. Perfect. That's fine. A couple of inches. If it's got a lot of gravel, add another half inch to an inch. Uh, and then put that on top of soil. If you will dig down, you can get some of that deeper material and use that. And that's, that's going to give you a, a, a really good, rich environment. <coughs> Excuse me. Who says? Jose Rodriguez. Nine ninety nine. Thank you, Jose, so much. Nice, nice of you. Nice of you. Let's see where we are here. Are freshwater clams good for tanks? Yes, they are. Don't do a lot of them. Do a few, two or three. It's another one of those animals that uh, if they die. You don't want more than one or two of them dead. If you put 20 of them in there, they all die. It's going to really foul the tank. So just a couple. And they will breed in your tank. You'll have babies. I mean, they breed really pretty easily. I made CO2 in fresh water from the rooftops and grow some best hygrophila stem plants. You bet. You bet. That's great. Uh -oh. Who is this? Uh, Ladana White to give you a wrench. Says, been lurking for months. Subscribed to watching all the Father Fish videos. Setting up a 55 dirted tank. I'm on a well that is softened with salt water softener, no, no, do not use softened water from a softener. There will be a tap outside between the well and the softener. That's where you get straight well water. That's the water you want. Do not use the softened water. It's got salt in it. Uh, plus, it's it's the hardness in it is totally messed up. It just isn't going to be right. And well water is absolutely perfect. So you want to use the well water. If you don't know where the tap is, ask somebody who knows. Because I guarantee you, there's a tap, probably the one outside. If you got a tap outside, it's almost certainly not attached to the water softener. And that's where you can get your water. <clears throat> But it's like CO2. Plants like CO2. I don't know that bettas like it. They're kind of indifferent to it because they breathe air from the surface. They do have gills. They do get a certain amount of oxygen out of the water. So I don't know that they like CO2. I don't know anything they eat that likes CO2. So I think I'll... <laughs> I think I'll have to put the kibosh on that one. But plants like CO2 for sure. Here we go. Erie first. My dog. My fish. Father fish. A beer and a burrito. Perfect Sunday right here. You betcha. I think go get a burrito. Jonathan Schutz. Freshwater tank. Obviously, we're saying something else. They tolerate it. They do tolerate it, right? Softwater helps a male better make great bubbling nests. Yeah, that's really true. And I don't know that CO2 helps keep water soft. I don't know about that. I don't think so. But maybe it does. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's true. The bubble nest will hold up better in salt water than in hard water. Uh, that's why soap bubbles. Soap is, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on there, Andy. Back up, back all the way up. 
Let's do that one more time. Acidic water does not maintain the bubbles. Hard water maintains the bubbles. Now, the reality is that those bubbles have a slime coat from the fish. They ain't just bubbles. They're magic bubbles. They're special better bubbles. They're bubbles that last and last because they've got a slime coat that doesn't um, dissipate into the water column. So here's the thing. Soap was the key. Soap is an alkaline. It's not an acid. Soap, alkaline, bubbles. However, in soft water, yeah, it rinses off. It doesn't rinse off. That's what it is. Soft water, soft acid water. Uh, if you take a bath and you have soft water, like water softener water, it can be you can feel soapy on your skin because because you got soft water. It doesn't get the doesn't get the the soap off. I'm getting confused here, aren't I? I need to shut up. <laughs> Somebody else figure this out. I think I'm too darn dumb. Do you do quarantine when you get new fish? Rarely see the rub mention the videos. Mostly I do not because mostly I know where I'm getting my fish from. And I trust the source. If you don't know where they're coming from, don't trust the source. And quarantine, by all means. I was talking with a shop owner today about this very issue. They quarantine. They quarantine excessively. And the reason they do is because the industry has become so derelict across the board in every aspect that they're, they're shipping fish knowing that they're diseased, knowing that they're weakened, knowing that they've got parasites, knowing that they're going to die. And there are enough markets for that, for those sick fish who depend on people buying fish that die in order to get them back in the store so they can buy more stuff. It is diabolical. So, yeah, until we can get it straightened out, and get these charlatans shut down because they need to be shut down. You need to, uh, uh, up, up until about 10 years ago, I never quarantined a fish. Never. And then I started importing, started getting stuff from people I didn't know. Had to do it. Had to do it. Rambo. Colomino, welcome to Snook. Rambo has become a paid member of the channel. Thank you, Rambo. Appreciate you very, very much. A shower in extremely salt water can make your hand, hair and skin feel greasy. Really greasy. Right, that's because it doesn't rinse the soap off. <laughs> Eerie first. Have the 60 liter up and running Father Fish style all swell. Load of plants. And actually think I see the pearl weed and Monte Carlo growing up. All right. All right. That is not easy to do. Good job, Harry. Nice. Bigger the nest the bubbles, happier the better. I gotta tell you the story. Some of you have heard this, but I gotta tell it. I had a little old lady come into my shop one day. Now, she had been buying bettas. She had she she would come in, she would spend hours looking at all the bettas. Finally, after a week, she'd buy one. She had two. She had two bettas. She spent two weeks buying those bettas. I taught her to feed frozen food because she didn't want to deal with the live stuff. Feeding frozen food, being very careful, very meticulous about everything. Came in in an absolute panic. Father Fizz, I'm so upset. What's the matter? My bed is sick. Oh, dear. 
Did you bring him in? No, I was afraid to. Well, what's he doing? Explain it to me. He's blowing bubbles. He can't breathe right. He's blowing bubbles. I see. All right. Hmm. I think I think your little boy Betta is lonely. And I got a video out and I showed her the video. So she could watch the whole process. And she was astounded. Astounded. She wanted to do it. So we got her a couple of females. And wouldn't you know, she came back in the following week. She had babies. And she went on to raise. She went on to raise betters. 80-year-old woman. Amazing. Amazing. Just thrilled and delighted. Uh, this tank is a 32-gallon. It's a 48-inch by 12 by 12. It's basically half of a 55, a little bit, maybe two inches taller than half. A 55 is 19. This is 13. So, that, well, it's more than half. 13, 26. This is 12, 24. That's 19 to 24 inches, too. I don't know. Anyhow, it's a 30-gallon tank. Four foot by, it's half. Essentially, half of the 55. Uh, just a really cool tank um, for what I'm doing, for this kind of thing. It's no good for big fish, but really cool for uh, for small fish. I'd like to have one eight feet long. That would be doubly cool. Yeah, right. Vinoxky is here. Hey, Vinoxky. Nice to see you. Kevin Brislong. Looks longer than 48. Nope. Nope. Not 48. What time is it? 7.30. I guess I'll go to 8. Guess I will. Usually do. Inspire me. Somebody inspire me. Oh, officially, many thanks, you guys, for the super chat support. Father Fish is so worth Well, there's inspiration, I should say. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Um, Yeah, my bank account's looking a little better. I'm selling a lot of plants. If you guys need plants, boy, have I got a deal for you. The best farm in Florida raises the best plants in Florida. And they only sell to select uh, shops. I've known them forever, and they sell to me. I'm buying stem plants. Now, I buy other plants from them, but the deal is stem plants. They have about 50 different kinds of stem plants that they grow out. I order, I'm up to 12. I think I'm going to go to 14. I might go to 16. Different species of stem plants. And I order 20 each of them. <clears throat> if I do that, I will have 20 orders. And I'm going to be pretty close to 20 orders. I've already got a dozen orders which means between now and the end of the week, I've got eight more orders uh, that I'll be able to fill. They come in on Thursday. I pack them out on Friday. Now, I don't, I unpack them. I put them in trays. I put them in water overnight, rehydrate them, get them back and strong. They're, they're very strong, healthy plants. They've taken two days to get to me. They're in perfect condition when I get them. I put them in the water, rehydrate them, bag them up the next day. I do eight in a bag, two bags, <clears throat> and then ship them two days. They get to you in two days. And, and if they get there in two days, 
they're in perfect condition. If it takes three days, there's going to be a little bit of wilting. Four days, there might be serious problems. Five days, they're gone. Uh, but if that happens, I make it good. It's not your fault, not my fault, but I want you to be happy. And it's too much hassle fighting with the post office. So I just cover it. Father.fish is the website where the store is. Go there and order. There are all kinds of things there. Check it all out. This The, the uh, supplement for the substrate is there. You want to get that if you're setting up a new tank because it's going to provide the nutrients that that tank is going to need until it gets itself fully cycled, which can take years to do. So you want to get those. It's got upwards of five years worth of minerals in there. So you want to do that. I also am selling for those, for the squeamish among us, I sell the leaf mulch and I sell a big bag of leaves. For people who can't get it, for whatever reason, uh, that's available as well. Lots of stuff. Come on over and uh, <clears throat> join the party. And we will ship out. I, I, I can assure you, if you get your order in, in the next couple of days, I'll get it out this week. Toward the end of the week, it'll be the following week. Uh, I just, I don't have room to handle more than about 300, 320 plants. Uh, Tiger Baddis. Oh, Vince Lee got Tiger Baddis. Oh, my word. Oh, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. I got to get a link for that. Let's see if I don't even know if I can if I can remember how to do this. I don't know if I do. Let me try it and see. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Where do you see this? Let's see. I don't know if I know how to do it. Present. Is that it? Share screen. There it is right there. Look at that. Is that cool or what? <clears throat> now, the trick with these is to get females. That's the trick. And there's, if you look right there, that's a female. And you never find them. They don't ship them in. It's really hard to get pairs of these guys. If you're lucky enough to get them, then that's exactly the environment that you want them in. Uh, they will spawn uh, and be just magnificent. Wonderful fish. I love baddest. Uh The tiger baddest, they, the baddest I always got is the scarlet. It's solid red. <clears throat> I've never had these tigers. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> Veggie piranha. Yeah, I know about that. The dollar, the silver dollar, silver dollar. It's about what they're worth, a buck. They eat everything, and you can't feed them enough to keep them from it. Now, here's the problem. They will not only eat all the plants. Eventually, they'll eat every other fish in the tank. They get big enough, and they'll just tear them up. Or they'll take it, and if they're in a little pack, like a wolf pack, forget it. They will knock them dead. Kind of put red worms in my fish tank. Uh, you can feed them, cut them up and feed them. Uh, I have heard people tell me that they raise them in water, but I don't think that's a red worm. 
I think that's a black worm that's gotten big because they do get five to six inches. I think that's what that is. I don't think that's a, a red wiggler at all. <clears throat> I kind of put raw chicken. Yeah, tiny, 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 small amounts. You don't want to feed a lot. But uh, yeah, any kind of chicken or bird is perfect because it has fats that the fish can digest. <clears throat> you don't want any kind of hamburger or pork or cattle or <clears throat> reindeer or skunk or nothing like that. They can't they can't dissolve the uh, uh, the fats. <clears throat> Excuse me. Vince has a mail. Keep an eye open. See if you can find. Might might be a fit. That would be wonderful. <clears throat> Looks like a paradise eating a turtle backwards. It does, doesn't it? Strange. <clears throat> Least favorite plant, duckweed, definitely. Actually, there's another one. There is, I, and I got some in my bed of thing. It is a microscopic leaf, like a duckweed, floats on the surface. It is literally microscopic. And it Man, you can't get rid of it. Ah, you cannot. There's no way to get rid of it. You can't net it out because it goes right through the holes in the net. It's a real bugger. I don't know where it came from or how I got it, but I got it. So one of my one of my least favorite code name S W E is now a moderator, Granny Franny. Let's give Granny. A wrench. <clears throat> Fed mine tuna today. Tuna is good. Egg is good for fry. It's difficult to feed because it fouls easily. And you're talking about the egg yolk. Uh, you can cook it and provide it, but a better food for fry is simply uh, to get a, 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 a paramecium culture, a Daphne culture, hatch brine shrimp, uh, get get a, a um, food web going that and then there are plenty of microscopic foods in fact I sell a, a package of four different kinds of micro foods these are prepared foods they're extremely high quality foods you get all four of them for I think 20 bucks a little packet of each so if you need that kind of thing, uh, I'm, I'm your source for it. You use a comb, it'll stick to the duckweed. You know what I use? I use a wet vac. You can get every bit of it. You know, you, you don't want to suck the water out. You hold it above the water and it'll, it'll get the leaves out. It gets a little bit of water but it'll get the leaves out. And I've actually been able, able to completely clear them out with that. Never tried the comb system. Tried nets, it works fairly well. Uh, how many hours a day are you spending with your tanks? Uh, certainly not an hour. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six seven tanks plus some vats outside um probably 10 minutes a day total time doing things i mean i assume that's your question where i actually have to be doing things mostly i don't do anything mostly plant plants i like the plant plants Do you trim your plants? No, I do not. Um, mainly because I just kind of go for the wild look. Um, now, if I had, if I had a bunch of bacopa or Ludwigia growing up out of my tanks, 
I probably would trim them uh, in order to be able to keep them growing in the tank. Because once they emerge, once they immerse, they drop all their leaves that are in the water. <clears throat> so all you get is this long stem and it doesn't look like much. But it'll flower, which is wonderful. Is my shop open to the public? My shop is closed. My shop is out of business. I have an online shop now. And I've adopted super cichlids in Dover. So that's my new, that's my new home shop. <clears throat> so I'm I'm meeting every time I go down, I meet people who know me as Father Fish. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, and I will be announcing it more. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm gonna be there Wednesday probably around noon uh, at Super Cichlids Wednesday in Dover, Delaware. Uh, I'm going to be working on the dirted substrate food web tank. So if you're in the area, stop in and say hello. What are the plants in the tank behind you? <clears throat> oh, golly day. About 10 different ones. Mostly Sagittarius, some Valisnarius, um, Swords, I don't know what all. That's part of the reason I want to get the sag out so I can see what's in there. I've been putting plants in for about a year, so I need to I need to look. Ketsy, tall plants you sent me look like what you have behind you. Yeah, laying down now in my brackets. Opahula likes to raise on them. Um, yeah, I think Ketsy, I did send you some of some of those for your uh, practice tank. And they should do just fine. <clears throat> RC Camper, nice to meet you on Saturday. That was great fun. I really appreciated it. Uh, our, there, were, there were two men who came in to the shop. First, first two men who came in looked at me and said, Father Fish. It was really fun. They recognized me right away. And we spent a lot of time chatting and, you know, just talking about fish and seeing what they're doing. And, and they were able to check out uh, the new system. By the way, we put a pair of, of uh, breeding crebenzas in that tank. Same day we set it up. And I got some video today, which will be in the video that will post Tuesday, showing them going in and out of the pot. By the time I come back Wednesday, we should be able to see fry. There should be babies. <clears throat> yeah, that's Val and the Sag. Sagittarius is like a big, thick Val. Neck Lang. Hello, Neck. Nice to see you. Gave you a wrench. <clears throat> uh, I do do I do specialized plants as well. Uh, I have people who want special plants. So you can order those. Usually it'll take me another another week because I have to order them in. But I can do that. <clears throat> Planetary Dweeb, how would you recommend adding the live culture leaf mix from your website? But if I simply dump the mixture in the aquarium or make uh, put small amounts of it in. If you'll set it up in a separate container, uh, just to kind of keep an eye on it, make sure it's coming back strong, and then put small amounts of it in your tank. You don't want to dump a whole lot in because they can throw the cycle out. Put a small amount in there, but do it routinely because over a period of time, you want to get a pretty good bed of it built up. You, know, you Start with the live and then add some dry leaves. Then a little more live, a little more dry leaves. Kind of do it that way. Uh, maybe twice a week. You put put one in and then the other. Every three days or so. That would be a pretty good uh, spacing. Uh, 
Love you too, Patty. Thank you so much. Osmocote. I have used Osmocote. I like Osmocote. Um, it's very difficult to use. You need to put it in capsules to get the capsules down in the substrate. Otherwise, it tends to want to float on top of the sand. It's just real hard to get those tiny little beads down into the substrate. But if you got some capsules, you can put it in or even wrap it in something. Um, something that'll break down. Wrap it in, I don't know what, what? Bread? I hate to do that. Don't put bread in your tank. I didn't say that. Something, something thin and narrow that'll break down. A leaf. Wrap it in a leaf and stick it down in there. That'll work perfectly. Put five or ten in a little leaf and then stick the leaf down in right next to a plant. Again, one time, one time you do that. Do not do it again. One time you get to do it. That will trigger the natural cycle. If you do it more than one time, you will stop the natural cycle. And I only do that if you've got just bare, clean, new sand with no nutrients at all. You're better off, frankly, mixing leaves in there, but you can do the osmocote or, or the plant tabs. You want to do tiny amount one time, not every month, not every six months, not every year. One time. It's all you need. <clears throat> Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? They don't, they, they want to float. They won't float in the water, but they'll float on the sand. If I have, this is Neil. Neil, say hello. If I have an existing planted tank with fluval biostratum capped with sand, some added leaves doing well, recommend change. No, uh-uh. Just keep adding the leaves to it. That's it'll be just fine. Um, if the tank is dry or wa low water level, then move the sand to one side, put some dirt down, move the sand to the other side. Put some dirt down and level the sand. Two inches of sand. If you got sand in your tank and the tank is empty, no water in it, or water just down to the level of the sand, push all the sand to one half of the tank. Put an inch of dirt in the bare side. Move all the sand back on top of the dirt. Put one inch of dirt on the other side and then level out the sand. So you got two inches. If you start with two inches, you'll end up with two inches. Okay? Get that? Not hard to do. It's easy to do. Sounds weird, but it's easy. Chris Welch. Does the soil supplement contain everything I need to create a diverse ecosystem? No, but it will create all of the minerals and biologicals that are needed in the substrate. You still need live culture. That's why the leaves, uh, the, the, uh, the, the rotted leaves with the live pond culture in it. So it's everything the substrate needs, but not everything the system needs. One of my planted tanks, one of my planted tank is sick. Fish keep getting sick. Impossible to know what it is, what the sickness is. Why don't you do this, Jonathan? Come on over to Discord. Can I post the link? Let me post the link. We we deal with this. Every day on Discord, come on over 
and we'll look at it. You can send pictures. We'll diagnose what's wrong and come up with a solution for it. That, that's the best way. I can't possibly answer that question with, with no knowledge. Chris, let me give you a wrench. I cannot ship plants to the Philippines. You can get plants in the Philippines better than I can get. Ugh. It would cost a fortune and they would arrive dead. So that don't work. That ain't going to work. I won't even send the dirt. It's too expensive. I have a distributor in uh, in Germany, in the EU, that's doing the substrate and will be doing plants. So if you're in the EU or Great Britain, uh, we can get we can get the uh, uh, the supplement to you, and we will be able to do plants. We've already made contact with the with the farms. It's just a matter of gonna get set up. Rotten fin and a white, yeah. You, you probably need to stop feeding, Jonathan, like all together. Like no more food ever at all. Zero food for the indefinite future until they are healthy. But you're going to have to do more than that. So do jump on Discord. Let's, let's get into it and we'll get it worked out. Promise. Ratish. Hello, Ratish. Harry Krishna. <laughs> Funny. Christopher. Hey, Christopher. Nice to see you. Where did my fish keeping begin? Actually, I think the fish keeping part of it began, I got the story somewhere, when I was selling the little tiny oyster crabs to the, the aquarium to Merle Cohen on Green Man Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland in 1955. That's where it started. No young cricket. Stop the water changes. Plants are doing amazing. Nitrate is stable. I know. I know. Well, what have I done now? I lost the chat. How did I do that? Show chat. <sighs> oh, funny. You're getting in trouble, Erie. Getting in trouble. All right, boys and girls. I think I think we're done. Can you use rainwater to set up a tank? You certainly can. It's going to be soft, acidic water. So you need to make a determination whether that's really what you want. In other words, you may need to mineralize it in order to get it to the pH and, and, and hardness level that you want. But you certainly can use rainwater. Was I selling fish out of dirted setups in Florida? Yes, I was. I had... 400 tanks, every one of them were dirted tanks, every one. And it had been set up the entire time I was there, which was nearly 20 years. Uh, 
Christian, Birnelli, Berardinelli. Planning to start a South American cichlid tank. Tap water 5.3. You want to get it, frankly, between 6.5 and 7.0. All of the fish that you will be getting are coming out of hard alkaline water. So, you know, setting up, setting up a biotope and putting fish in it that have not been in their native water for 50 years really doesn't work. It really doesn't. It's, it's a pretty much a guaranteed way of killing the fish. So find out what the water conditions are, where the fish are that you're getting. If you can get them from salter water, so much the better. But if you're getting them from a shop, or a regular breeder, they're going to be in hard alkaline water. Almost guaranteed. Bludge, hello, hello. Wife is addicted to my channel and videos. I love your wife. Shrimp, I love your wife, right? Oh, well. Shrimp and aquatics. Best way to get rid of miniature rams on. Uh, yeah. Simple way to get rid of miniature ram's horn. Stop putting food in the tank. They explode in population because of the excess food, excess nutrients that are in the tank. Frankly, if you didn't have those snails, your tank would probably have collapsed from pollution. So consider that when you are fraught and beset by snails that are a result of uh, 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 an environment, an unhealthy environment that you have created, that nature is trying to rescue your sorry butt from. How's that, boys and girls? There's a note to end on. <laughs> All right. No hard feelings, Shrimpy. Appreciate you. Okay, we're done. We're out of here. Here he first. By the way, my ma's still single. Then I'd really call you father. <laughs> well, send her over. Send her. I'm looking for a housekeeper. Actually, looking for a wife. I think. I'm not sure, but I think so. We'll see. Penny Ward. Oh, nice. <clears throat> Sister got two blood reds and five golden pandas. Nice. Nice. One wanderer. Hello, hello. What are changes stimulate breeding? Yeah, it does. Okay, I'm going to go. I love you all. Uh, I'll be at, um, what did I say? Super Cichlid in Dover on Wednesday afternoon. See those of you who get there. See you there. Got a video coming out Tuesday. Make sure you get over to Discord if you haven't. Particularly those of you who are dealing with issues so we can deal with your issues. Check out father.fish. Buy some plants. Get some dirt. Buy some mud. We sell dirt, we sell mud, we sell rotted junk, we sell, we sell yuck, we sell it all. <laughs> and it's wonderful, wonderful. Love you guys. Bye for now. See you on Discord. Bye, Neil. <laughs>